can't really put it in here. Well, that's easy enough. Yeah. Well, we want to take it out. We got a bag. A bag. Push, yeah.
Good morning. All right, we're going to start in about five minutes, so uh, feel free to grab a coffee or a water. If you need to use the uh, restrooms, they're outside that blue door right down here. So grab your coffee and find your seats. We'll start in about five minutes.
All right, we're going to get started here. Great turnout. Thanks for coming, everybody. Welcome to National Work Zone Awareness Week. I'm John Richard with the Michigan Department of Transportation, AKA the MDOT, and we are here at Team Elmer's. This all started in 1956. I was looking online at some of the history. Uh, Elmer and Edna started this all as a mod pa shop back in the day, and they proved that they can rip it out and put it back better than new. So great history of this company. Elmer sold it to Butch Broad back in 1977, and it's been in the Broad family ever since. Um, Todd and Troy, and of course, uh, Tanya Wildfong, thanks for having us. This is a great place to have the event, so we appreciate you uh, letting us uh, host, be our host here. So thank you so much, and thanks to our sponsors. We've got some sweet giveaways, and we've got some uh, savory lunch. So please stick around when uh, we're done chatting for some food and some fellowship. So, but this is where it all starts, places like this. Um, you gear up, you leave for the day, you gear up for safety, and you hope and pray that everyone else is following the rules and paying attention. So um, I've been with MDOT for 10 years now covering communications in our 13 county Grand Region down in Grand Rapids. Uh, my counterpart in the North Region, James Lake is here somewhere. There he is, James, thank you. Great coworker, thanks for being here. Diane Cross from our Metro Region is here. Uh, there's Diane, thanks for making the, making the drive. Great to have you guys here. A lot of uh, familiar faces uh, with an MDOT here, so great to see everybody. And I say this every year for National Work Zone Awareness Week. Driving is the most dangerous thing we do in our lives, and we do it almost every single day. So think about that. The most dangerous thing we do, and we do it almost every day. So we've got seven speakers here today to talk about challenges and solutions in work zones safety professionals from all around Michigan. And I'm very thankful that this year's event is up north in Traverse City, not only because it's such a beautiful place, I also used to work here back in the day. I was a sports reporter for Channel 7 and 4. So anyone remember sports director Vic McCarty for Channel 7 and 4? Yep. And Mark Chalette, Mark Chalette still works there, right? So tell Mark that JR said hi back from 1999 when I had sweet hair. So, uh, <clears throat> but, uh, it's really nice to be out of Grand Rapids because all the spring breakers are coming back today and we've got a lot of roads closed. So it's so nice to be up here because they're going to be in for a rude awakening this morning. So, and we're live streaming today. So welcome to the millions of viewers that I'm sure are watching via the Google machine. So it's nice to have you guys aboard. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm a big, big fan of basketball. Love to play it. Love to watch it. My Spartans, that hurt Saturday night, but... I was thinking that the tournament is a great reminder that you never know what you're going to get. You never know who you're going to play. You never know what life is going to throw at you. And we're here today because we all have the common goal of making something we do safer every day. Every day. And Saturday's Final Four reminded me that great defense wins. I mean, you got to shoot better than 32% for crying out loud. I mean, McQuaid had that wide open look in the corner. It's going to haunt that kid for the rest of his life. But my point is you got to have a defensive and offensive strategy, and all of our speakers do, because live traffic is a nasty opponent that does not care about the rules. And on top of that, the psychology behind driving is pretty unique. People get crazy behind the wheel. I get crazy behind the wheel. My friends, everyone does it. If somebody wrongs us on the road, we turn into the dad from a Christmas story and start yelling at the Bumpus' dogs. We do profane gibberish behind the wheel. By a show of hands, who is uncharacteristically um, quick-tempered when driving? Right? And there's a reason for that. The emotions are high because when you're driving a two-ton vehicle at 70 miles an hour, lives are on the line. Your life is on the line. Your passengers' lives are on the line. So, drive like you work here. That's this year's theme. Drive like you work here. So we're going to talk about some of these challenges, and our first speaker knows these challenges all too well. 26 years with MDOT, he's our new chief operations officer and our chief engineer. One of our leaders, a great manager, and a great resource. So fire up chips and go blue for Mr. Tony Cradifil. Thank you, John. Good morning, everyone. I was actually rooting for the Spartans this weekend. It was kind of weird to do that, but, um, and it's unfortunate they ran, ran up against the same Texas Tech team that we did, but 
Anyway, good morning and welcome to this uh, very special event that highlights National Work Zone Safety Awareness Week. And thank you to all the great people at Team Elmers for hosting us here today. Uh, I've been at a few of these in the past. This is by far the most well attended and quite frankly beautiful uh, surroundings and events and, and the, the effort you put into this is really fantastic. So thank you for that. Safety for our workers and frankly everyone in work zones is of the utmost importance. And so this event and National Work Zone Safety Awareness Week is really meant as a great reminder of that goal. The turnout of our partners who believe in that importance, just like we do at MDOT, is reassuring as well. But I can't say that I'm pleased to be here because I'm still very saddened that our goal of zero deaths on our roadways, especially in work zones, has not been achieved. In 2018, four more workers were killed in Michigan work zones. Dave Snell with CA Hall, Julian Perez Ortega with DCI Indianapolis, Emmanuel Gonzalez Garcia with Ajax Paving, and Andre Alvesteffer with Gustafson uh, Horizontal Directional Drilling. The four crosses with hard hats and vests here are in remembrance of them. And I want to note today that we're joined by Dave Snell's family, Rachel Snell, his, his wife and sons, David and TJ. Uh, where are you? Thank you for being here and, and our condolences. And Andre Alvesteffer's family, uh, his parents, Daryl and Helen and brother Aaron. Are they here? In the back. You should be sitting up front here with us. Our condolences to you as well. Thank you for coming, and our thoughts and prayers will continue to be with you as you struggle with your loss. We're also joined by Damon Williamston, who was struck by a vehicle with Andre in September, and we're thankful that he is here with us today. Damon, where are you? Are you here? Okay. Well, he, he's running late, but he's on his way, and, and I understand he'll be finishing physical therapy in May, so we're just thankful that he, he was not killed and that he's uh, going to make a recovery. We also said goodbye this past year to Andrew James Lefko, who died on August 21st. Andrew, many of you know, was the namesake of Public Act 103 of 2001, commonly known as Andy's Law. It's the law that provides specific penalties for drivers who injure or kill construction workers in work zones. The reason we have the sign up here. The law was passed after Andy, who was only 19 years old at the time, was left paralyzed after being struck while working on I-275 in Metro Detroit. The sign, as I noted, outlines the penalties for Andy's, Andy's law and is done in Andy's honor. We also have Andy's mother, Diane Barnes, and her fiance, Joe, are you in the audience? Thank you for joining us. Adding to this tragedy of the workers is the fact that our, they are not the only ones who are injured and killed in our work zones. Last year, 14 people were killed traveling in Michigan work zones as well. And so we have 14 cones with black ribbons representing all the motoring public who lost their lives while driving through Michigan work zones last year. So at this time, I'd ask you all to join me in a moment of silence in honor of everyone, workers and motorists, who were killed in work zones this past year. Thank you. Now it would be easy to be discouraged by the number of people hurt and killed in work zones because all these incidents are truly saddening and most are preventable. We're reminded by the sense of grief we feel by the presence of the families here today who have suffered unbearable losses themselves. But the people here today and people throughout our state are committed to doing all we can to prevent more of these losses in the future. Last year, Mike Malore from CA Hall approached our former director, Kirk Steidel, to start a joint effort between contractors and MDOT to raise the bar and make our work zones safer. I have the honor to serve as co-chair with Mike of what has become the Michigan Work Zone Safety Task Force. Rachel Van Devetter 
who uh, will be speaking shortly today, uh, serves on that task force. And others amongst us have stepped forward to contribute to this effort as well. I'd ask everyone in attendance that is part of the Work Zone Safety Task Force to please stand so we can recognize you. So if you're on any of the action teams, look at all the folks that are committed to Thank you. Look at all the folks that are committed to making a difference and making our work zone safer. So the task force is a great collaboration across our entire industry to change the culture of work zones in Michigan. How we set up our work zones, how we perform our work within our work zones, how our citizens understand and drive around work zones, how we all collectively treat our work zones with care and caution. The theme of this year's campaign, Drive Like You Work Here, couldn't be truer. Fixing our roads and bridges is very important work. Men and women across our state put their lives on the line to work in some of the most challenging environments. And our roads are our offices. They are our workplaces. And all we ask is for everyone, ourselves included, to understand and act like it's their office too. Now we wouldn't show up in someone else's office under the influence of drugs or alcohol. I hope we wouldn't. We wouldn't run through another person's cubicles at an unsafe speed. We wouldn't operate heavy machinery while in a factory while texting on our phones. We would pay attention to the signs and directions in an unfamiliar place. We would exercise caution, watch our step and look both ways. We would yield to the other people crossing our path. So as we prepare for another construction season here in Michigan, we're putting in the effort to make our work zones safer than ever. Notice the several devices around you here today and outside. You will see many of them out on our highways as an effort to make driving and, and working in our work roadways safer. We want to remind workers everywhere to act with safety in mind and be aware of everything around you. I know you all want to go home every night safe and sound and that's what we want for you too. And to drivers in our work zones, please, Drive like you work here. Following that little bit of advice will help ensure we all make it home safe as well. So thank you and be safe. Drive like you work here. Thank you, Tony. Our next speaker has been a regular at this event, so Rochelle, thank you for your continued support. Uh, Rochelle brings over 18 years of transportation-related experience. She's a lead liaison with MDOT, FHWA, the Department of Labor, MDEQ, county and local agencies. So please welcome the Vice President of Industry Relations for the Michigan Infrastructure and Transportation Association, also known as MIDA, Rochelle Van Deventer. John. Thank you all for being here today. This is, again, like Tony said, a great crowd. In 2018, a national survey conducted by the Associated General Contractors of America, 54% 54, 54 of the 550 highway contractors surveyed reported that motor vehicles crashed into their construction work zones over the previous year. In addition, 48% of those contractors reported injuries due to the crashes, including 24% involving fatalities. The survey also reported that 74% of those responding to the survey feel highway work zone crashes pose a greater risk now compared to a decade ago. Here in Michigan, within our own construction industry, those high and unacceptable numbers are understood far too well. Now, as all of us know, there's a lot of work to be done here in Michigan, so road work is not going away anytime soon. And neither are the growing number of possible driver distractions. Especially if we get the infrastructure funding that we all so desperately need, there's gonna be even more projects, and we're gonna need a strong and skilled workforce to help repair our crumbling infrastructure so that all of us can realize the benefits. But in order to attract and retain a strong 
and skilled workforce, those workers need to feel safe going to work every day. And their families need to feel confident that their loved ones are going to come home at the end of the workday. Awareness is the main goal of this week's national event, but work zone safety needs to be something that everyone considers every time they drive. As Tony mentioned, MIDA, MDOT, and our other industry partners are working together to help elevate awareness of work zone safety and to help keep it in the forefronts of our minds. But we won't be able to create a cultural change all on our own. We need everyone's help sharing this message. And so we appreciate everyone who is here today that recognizes the importance of work zone awareness as an everyday consideration. Today is the day that each of us can commit to talk to our friends and family about work zone safety and risky and or harmful driving habits. We can remind them and ourselves that our driving habits can save lives, including our own. Mida really appreciates Team Elmer's hosting today's event. The construction industry cares so deeply about this cause and is 100% committed to helping spread any message that could help improve work zone safety and allow for more people to arrive home alive at the end of the day. So thank you for attending today's event and remember, always drive like you work here. Thank you, Rochelle. Lieutenant Travis House enlisted as a trooper in 1998 for the Michigan State Police in Reed City and Cadillac. He's now in Gaylord as the MSP spokesperson and PIO for Northern Michigan. PIO means public information officer, so Travis gets a lot of interesting emails just like I do dealing with the public. So please welcome First Lieutenant Travis House. Thank you, John. Uh, first of all, before I begin, um, I'd like to share my condolences with the families of these, these fallen workers. As someone who has uh, served along the roadways in Michigan and lost uh, co-workers to those same things, I feel you. So uh, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. I um, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, this is quite a crowd. I'm impressed by the number of people who want to come out here and support this cause. Uh, it's a very important day. Um, 4,921. Throw some numbers at you. That is the, uh, the, the preliminary numbers for the total number of crashes in construction zones in Michigan last year. Uh, also preliminarily, these crashes resulted in 1,321 injuries and 18 fatalities, four of which uh, unfortunately were construction workers. Every time there's a crash in a construction zone, uh, there is the possibility, the potential, for one of the workers there to be injured. So we talk about work zone safety. Uh, we're not just talking about uh, the safety of the motoring public, we're also talking about the safety of those who work there. First of all, uh, I want to talk about what the responsibility is of the drivers. Uh, as a police officer, you know, it's our responsibility to be out there enforcing the laws. And the responsibilities of the drivers are directly uh, reflected by what's written in the laws. First of all, drivers need to slow down, all right? Uh, we have slower speed limits in those areas for a reason. Uh, always adhere to that 45 where workers are present, right? And everyone in this room knows that. Uh, I want to speak beyond you, out to the audiences who might be watching this uh, later on on the television or reading about this in the newspaper. Uh, they need to know that they need to slow down. Those work zones represent different areas or different driving conditions than do the other roadways. Uh, not only are there people out there working, but the lanes may be changed somewhat. You know, there's different traffic shifts. We have to adhere to those speed limits. Uh, don't tailgate. And the most common traffic crash in a work zone is a rear end collision, all right? And that's usually caused by too much speed and not allowing for enough, uh, enough following distance. You have to be aware of your surroundings, give some extra space, and, uh, and this, this is the theme, right? Be courteous. Stay focused and alert. Uh, it also happens to be uh, Distracted Driving Awareness Month in the state of Michigan. I was just talking with one of the troopers this morning from the Traverse City Post uh, about the number of times he has seen over the last couple of weeks drivers in this area alone uh, being distracted by a device in their car. Uh, 
in a work zone, that's even, even a worse offense, of course. Uh, we're talking about, again, driving through someone's office uh, where their lives are in peril because we can't take a minute to put our phones down and wait to respond to those text messages. Just as a matter of reference, in the five seconds it takes someone to look down at a text message at 55 miles an hour, a car is going to travel about the length of a, of a football field. A car can do a lot of damage in that time. Lastly, we've got to be patient and courteous in those work zones. Uh, allow other people to merge. Um, take time to uh, evaluate what's going on. Read the signs. There's a lot of instruction that's given by, by the signs. And by the way, thank you, Team Elmers, for setting this up as a beautiful display. Allow other drivers to merge in order to keep that traffic flowing because uh, when the traffic comes to a stop, people get more and more frustrated and, and we have more and more issues. Remember that those road workers are there doing their job to give you a better road. Today's construction zone results in a smoother commute tomorrow. While I have the podium, I need to drive home one more point. Um, and thank you, Mr. Lake, uh, for helping me to, to, to think about this even farther than I had in the past. Uh, traffic crashes are not accidents, okay? Uh, when we use the word accident, it invokes an image of a circumstance that couldn't be avoided. That's not true of traffic crashes, all right? Every driver has a responsibility to safely pilot their vehicle at a speed which is prudent for the environment whether driving a construction zone, a school zone, or in poor weather. If a driver loses control of their vehicle because their speed isn't appropriate for the conditions, they fail to live up to that responsibility. And I'll leave you with a final reminder. Michigan State Police Troopers patrol work zones to look for aggressive drivers, distracted drivers, impaired drivers. Expect to see us out there. Uh, we've, we see it as our job to be out there helping to keep those areas safe, and we partner with the Michigan Department of Transportation, Office of Highway Safety Planning, to get that job done. Every worker deserves to go home safely at the end of the day. The effort of the motoring public to drive safely in work zones will help them get there. Thank you for your time. Saw a guy on a motorcycle last week texting. He had his phone on his thigh with one, one hand on the handlebars. First time I'd seen that one. That was a new one. Um, <clears throat> our next speaker has 22 years of utility operations experience. He deals with work zones, live traffic, and high voltage. Uh, he's a Ferris State Bulldog and a fellow Grand Valley State Laker. Chris lives in Holland with his wife, Stephanie, and their two children. Say hi to Chris Laird, the executive director of electric operations for Consumers Energy. Good morning, everyone. Thank you again, Team Elmers, for putting this on. What a great event. Uh, I appreciate looking out in the audience and seeing a lot of my CE family members here. So team, thanks for being up here today. I appreciate you guys carving out time to be here for this important event. It's really a privilege to be here. I don't think we can ever over communicate the importance of our work zone safety. Uh, it's extremely important for us to do that. We have the privilege to serve customers in all 68 counties in the Lower Peninsula. So we're on the road a lot, drive millions and millions of miles every single year. And the majority of our facilities are in uh, the roadway, in our roadway protection environment. So there's no doubt safety is important here at Consumers Energy. Uh, it's the heart of what we do 24-7. Really, it's a goal for us to continue to emphasize safety at Consumers Energy, not only for our employees, but for our customers and the general public as well. So we're continuing to do that. Already this year, we've experienced several significant weather events. Ice storms, snowstorms, wind events, we're out responding 24-7 to those emergencies, and it's extremely important that we are make, making sure our environment's safe when we do that. And as I look through the audience, a lot of times, you're in those same zones that we are. I was talking to Travis this morning earlier about the fact that we have a great partnership with our public safety officials, and they're willing to come out and help us when we need to block down lanes of roads to make sure that we're doing our work as safe as we possibly can. So I'd also like to talk about some things we're doing at Consumers Energy. We're really enhancing our commitment to safety. In addition to personal protective equipment, cones, signage, all of our high intensity lighting, we've added new tailboards to every job so that we go out, identify hazards before they can happen, and take actions to make sure we mitigate those. 
We also empower employees to stop the job for any reason to make sure that we get on the same page and that we're doing it as safe as we possibly can. So really excited about a lot of the things that we're doing. In addition to that, we're starting our spring work. April is when our workload really starts to ramp up for us. So you're gonna see a lot of our blue and white trucks out doing work in roadways as we start to ramp up and get to warmer weather. So whether we're doing civic improvement projects, emergency situation response, whatever we're doing, our employees are trained and prepared to respond to those environments. They know the safety protocol, they know what to do, they'll make sure they take care of that. But despite of knowing all the precautions, it only takes one moment of inattention for something drastic to happen. We realized that in 2012 when one of our CE family members, Jeff Krill, was killed in a work zone, he was hit by a party that was distracted as they were driving. More recently here in Traverse City, we lost another family, Jim Farrington, to a tragic event here out on the old Mission Peninsula. So we have to remember every day, one moment of inattention can change someone's life forever. That's why I'm here today. It's why we're here today, to make sure that we're showing our commitment to safety. We wanna to continue to erase the awareness around safety, work zone safety, slow down and go around. Very, very important for us. Uh, we are also very pleased of Public Act 349, the new law changing when people don't slow down and go around for emergency responders, utility, roadside workers as well. So it's not only our coworkers that we're looking out for, it's all of our customers, it's all of our public safety because there are family members, there are friends, and they're the people that make Michigan go. So I'll leave you with one last thing. I'm back in Traverse City, it's where I started my career. I worked in the line department alongside of many of the folks sitting in this room. Very proud of the work we do, but also personally firsthand know of all of the challenges that are associated with that work. So appreciate you guys being here today. Thanks for letting us be part of it. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Eric Allen has been in the health and safety field since 2004. He has degrees from Madonna University as well as Wayne State, making him both a crusader and a warrior for safety. The manager of construction safety and health with Michigan OSHA, please welcome Eric Allen. Thank you everyone for allowing us to be here and for Team Elmer's putting on this event and all the people that also put in their hard work so this event could be possible. We appreciate having my OSHA here as well to spread uh, what we can do as well. In 2018, my OSHA investigated nine workplace fatalities of Michigan workers that were killed in or adjacent to a roadway. And you may think that they were all construction related, but they were not. Included in the non-construction group were a police officer, a school teacher acting as a crossing guard, two tow truck drivers in separate events, and a refuse collector. The construction group included a roadway inspector, an operating engineer, a sales worker helping with the drilling operation, and, an op and a laborer. These are all individuals, and they all have families. This number does not account for the roadway incidents that left employees seriously injured, though. Additionally, there are several work zone events that could have occurred in which near misses occurred and under different circumstances would have left people seriously injured and or killed. Myosha recognizes that work zones can be unpredictable with live traffic buzzing nearby, and Myosha has developed a state emphasis program that began on April 1st, 2019 and runs to the end of the year. Myosha anticipates conducting over 30 roadway <coughs> projects under this program. Myosha Enforcement Division, Construction Safety and Health Safety Officers will specifically look for work that is occurring on or adjacent to road work and verify that the employers are, and the workers are being protected what's in what's required under the Michigan Manual of Uniform Traffic Controls. The MMUTCD provides details of the minimum an employer can legally do to provide a safe working environment for those on the roadways. We can all share stories of how a motorist did something completely unexpected but nobody was hurt. Not all workers can say that though. Some have been seriously injured or killed. Understanding the situations that workers are faced with on the roadways, and we know that we can't control every motorist, but we can control our work site. Do your part 
to, to contribute to a safe workplace. It may be as small as telling your supervisor the deficiencies you noticed in the traffic control plan, or telling your coworkers that their vest is open. It could be a toolbox talk that explains different situations, setting up extra signs on that roadway, or offering opinions on roadway operations. Every person contributing to safety of the project enhances that situation. Myosha also recognizes that road work does not occur during normal eight to five work schedules. Myosha Construction Safety and Health Division will start conducting non-traditional work hour presence in May and running through the end of September. This emphasis on non-traditional hours will be to verify that employers are following the applicable worker safety and health regulations. The enforcement safety inspections will focus on the OSHA construction fate, uh, focus four, and that is struck by, falls, crushed by, slash, caught between, and electrocutions. The health inspections will focus on work operations, demolition projects, bridge painting, commercial renovation projects, and those that create exposures to asbestos, lead, and total dust. As we collectively kick off this road construction season in Michigan, let's remember that many lives have been lost in our roadways from vehicle worker incidents. Working men and women seek to put in an honest day's work and to go home in the same condition that they arrived. This can be accomplished through proper planning, having the proper equipment, and training the workforce. So let's work safe together for a productive road construction season, and thank you for participation in this event to bring awareness to this national issue. Thank you, and be safe. Okay, our next speaker is with ADSA, and he's the Vice President of PK Contracting. Now, PK Contracting is the, uh, I like to call them the geometric artist of our roadways. They paint and mark thousands of miles throughout Michigan, and they do it right next to live traffic. So Kurt has probably seen it all. So please welcome Kurt Shea. Thank you, John. Good morning. My name is Kurt Shea from PK Contracting. I'm also the president of the Michigan chapter of, of American Traffic Safety Services Association. On behalf of the Michigan chapter of ATSA, I want to thank you for being here today. A special thanks to Team Elmer for hosting, as well as the many individual and business sponsors who have made this possible. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to be part of the kickoff to National Work Zone Awareness Week, a week to encourage safe driving through work zones and to raise awareness of the importance of roadway safety. It is important to take time out at the beginning of the construction season to raise awareness and recognize the hazards of the road work that we do. Today's event marks the beginning of another construction season in Michigan as we reaffirm our commitment to roadway safety. What began five years ago on the Lansing Capitol steps with three attendees has grown to a large coalition of active partners committed to a culture of roadway safety. Thank you, Chuck Bergman. Chuck, where are you? Hello. Let's... I'd like to see this keep growing and growing as there is safety in numbers. Our, in our industry of dedicated professionals put safety first. We are here because we care. We believe it is our duty to raise awareness to this very important cause. Everyone expects to go home at the end of the day. We all expect to travel the roads and safely arrive at our destination, and no one should lose their life on the roads. We remain committed to our goal of zero deaths until there is no longer a need to add names to the National Work Zone Memorial. The National Work Zone Memorial, dedicated to the names of those lost in our nation's work zones, honors those who lost their lives. A small version of the original memorial can be seen on the TV screen to my right. The original version is 20 feet long and 7 feet high. We are working towards a day that there are no more names to add to that memorial. I have said this before, repeating myself, but it's worth repeating. The Michigan chapter of ATSA challenges everyone to ask yourself this question. Am I doing everything that I can to help create a safe environment when I get behind the wheel, especially when I enter a work zone. The, question, the questions are fundamental to safe driving and is worth remembering. Think before you get behind the wheel. When driving through a work zone, drive like you work here. Use extra caution as you enter our office. Our team is counting on you to drive safely. Your loved ones are counting on you to drive safely. Slow down and pay attention to the road. 
Be alert and focus on driving. Be respectful to others. A little courtesy will go a long way to making the road safer. Look ahead and identify lane changes, stop traffic, or unexpected hazards. Work zones most often include changes in traffic patterns with lane shifts and closures. When driving in a work zone, you're participating in work zone safety and the decisions you make affect others. Another thing that others can do is to become involved. Be a, be a voice, speak up, become a roadway safety advocate. Affect change by engaging others through conversation. Talk about Michigan's roads and the importance of safe driving. Become part of the solution and join our team of safety partners. By reaching out, we can educate others, affect change, and save lives. Finally, the Michigan chapter of ATSA, we're made up of volunteers with the same goal, to advance roadway safety. We are volunteers, to, volunteers dedicated to advancing roadway safety so that no more lives are lost on the roads. Our industry is working hard to provide the safest roads possible. Your presence inspires us and many others to continue to be innovative and find new ways to do our job better. To continually move forward so that lives already lost are not in vain. Good will come from our efforts. On behalf of ATSA, our Michigan chapter, and the other chapters across the U.S., thank you for your commitment to advancing roadway safety and allowing us to be part of this very important safety awareness campaign. Next, I would like to introduce, it's my pleasure to introduce, Dave Krahulik. Dave is the president of Horizon Signal and also serves as the president of the American Traffic Safety Services Foundation. Dave? <laughs> Good morning. Although I wish there was no reason for us to be here this morning, I'm honored to be representing the ATSA Foundation at today's event. The American Traffic Safety Services Association, or ATSA, represents the roadway, work, roadway safety and infrastructure industry with membership throughout North America, including a chapter right here in Michigan. Recognizing the need to give back, ATSA created the foundation, which is often referred to as the heart of the, foundation, of the uh, ATSA. The foundation is a registered 501c3 charity and is comprised of one very talented staff member <clears throat> and 17 board of directors who donate their time and expertise to make work zone safety uh, a, a priority within ATSA. We have uh, uh, offer charitable programs, events, and focus on spreading the word um, through public awareness. The foundation has several programs supported by charitable giving that promote work zone safety, honor those who have lost their lives in the work zone, and support dependents of workers lost. Our scholarship program provides college scholarships for dependents of workers who have been killed or permanently disabled in the work zone. I'm pleased to tell you that in 2019, um, we are giving out nine scholarships to children of fallen workers. For younger children, the foundation has joined experience camps to provide a safe place to meet other children who are coping with similar challenges. Experience camps are free, and the foundation covers a round-trip expenses for the child and their guardian, which means there's no cost to the family. The National Work Zone Memorial, which you've heard some of this morning, was created in 2002 as a living tribute to individuals who lost their lives in the work zone. The memorial has 1,000 491 names on it. The names include roadway workers, law enforcement, first responders, non-impaired motorists, pedestrians, and children. The earliest name dates back to 1928, with the latest being put on from 2017. As you might suspect, locating, vetting, and securing appropriate authorizations of lost workers to be placed on a memorial is no easy task. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stephanie, are you here, Stephanie? Would you make your way up here, please? In 2018, Stephanie Boylo, a member of the, uh, a board member of the Michigan ATSA chapter and a geotechnical engineer with soils and structures, undertook an effort to ensure Michigan's fallen workers were not forgotten. To date, Stephanie's diligent efforts have resulted in the addition of Dave Snell, Andre Avesteffer, and Kevin Folleth being added to the memorial. Andy's left goes name will be added at the end of this year. And uh, I'm pleased to tell you Dave's uh, widow is gonna speak to us in just a few minutes. Thank you for sharing. Um, on behalf of the foundation, 
Roadway workers everywhere, we offer our deepest sympathies. Please know your loved ones will not be forgotten. Stephanie, the foundation would like to recognize and honor your work today by presenting you with the first ever Foundation Champion Award. How about a big hand for Stephanie while I grab the award? Thank you. If you'd like to learn more about the foundation, the programs um, that we have available, how to, how to introduce people to the foundation, or just get involved, uh, please visit us at um, thefoundation.atsa.com. Thank you. And now I'd like to, uh, like to introduce Dave Snell's widow, Rachel. Please come up. And your family. I'm gonna stand like this probably, it'll work better. So this is my, I wanna introduce first part of my family. Um, I have my son David, um, our son TJ had to fly to Germany for work so he couldn't be here so he's very sorry. And then this is our other family. This is our work family. This is Martha from CA Hall and Kurt. And Kurt, come on up just for a second. Kurt was with my husband when he was hit. And I'm just so grateful, as I know my husband is, that Kurt was um, not severely injured and not killed. So I love you. I came up with a purpose. And first and foremost, I want to thank all the officers because you know, I've heard so many great stories today in all the other industries because you do, you put your life out there in the line every day. And I know that my husband talked about it as he got ready to leave, uh, usually at 2 a.m. on Monday mornings so he could beat traffic to Detroit and then he'd be gone all week. And he said in the last 10 to 12 years, things had really changed. And he blamed part of that for cellular devices and then just the abuse and increased traffic in Michigan alone and where the road work, um, where the projects were being, you know, worked on. We were in some level three areas and, um, you know, he said there was just some real problems and he knew that one day things would change because he had heard about it from his workmates and of course the hall and the company. I know this um, summer after my husband passed away, I found over 18 different safety books that were issued through the company and each one had a little note or a memo and, um, you know, so I know what's going on out there. I know the companies are taking an active step. So in my thoughts, you know, as I'm an assistant superintendent for a public school, and I thought, what is missing and what can be done? What can I do? I can't go out on the road. I can't take that type of action, but what can I do to help educate upcoming generations of kids? And so I wanna challenge all the institutions that have powers in here, and I invite you to invite me to come speak to the legislature or when you hold a budget meeting. But I think the first thing can start with our littles. Our littles love to learn, and they love to learn about things that have importance. So for instance, um, when I walk around in my safety vest at work, they ask me why I'm wearing it. I tell them because I'm protecting. I'm out on the road, I'm, I'm a crosswalk, I'm a cross guard. And they say, why do you have to wear the vest? I mean, these are six, seven years old, you know, kids. Well, hopefully a driver would see me. They may be distracted. And then I started to ask questions this last January and February. What do you know about work zone safety? What do you know about orange cones? Well, they're just put out there. And they couldn't tell me why. Well, why are they put out there? Well, they're just telling me that I can't drive on that part of the road. And I said, but they're also there to protect the workers behind them. You know, and so I want to open those conversations and I want to challenge the powers that be from the state police, Michigan Department of Transportation, consumers, all the organizations that be, let's come up with something to, to educate children. 
early in schools. Let's come up with presentations. Let's come up with learning kits. I know MDOT has some for other things. I'd like to see it for kids. The second piece, we need something for driver's training. You see, our kids go through driver's training, but I'm not sure we're intentional, if ever, of going through a work zone, studying what we should be doing, looking for, and then practicing driving through those. With intentional discover, uh, discussions about making sure your cell phone is not on, by making sure that you haven't consumed drugs or alcohol, Right? And talking about those things. So I think we could make that happen in our driver's education programs. I know we can. So that's where the Department of Ed, the Michigan Department of Transportation, and again, all the organizations can come together and potentially make a difference. We can hit our teenagers with intentional instruction. Because road work is, you're right, you're entering, what, a 15-year potential boom because we know the dollars, we've got the, the people that, that can make those decisions in place and make those um, determinations and funnel money towards that. So those are the big two challenges I wanted to put out there and also offer my hand. And I know my sons will offer their hands because our father, my husband, was taken by a drunk driver who entered a work zone who under a freakish, freakish set of conditions with all things perfectly set right, had his life taken. And only to learn that she was on her cell phone as well just made it even worse. So those are the things that I think we can do and reach schools and take this because that's a conversation that's silent. So I know we, could, we can bring that alive in schools and with uh, drivers. So I didn't want to stay up too long. I just wanted to thank you, every single one of you. And if you're a worker, a foreman, you own a company, you are working for MDOT, you're behind the desk, you're reading the laws, you're writing the bylaws, you're sitting with legislation, thank you. Because it's with all of us as one family, like my family, that we're gonna make the changes so we can reduce the amount of people that are killed on our roadways, so thank you. Well, thank you. Well said. That was great. Thank you. <clears throat> well, before we break for lunch, we're almost done. Um, our statewide work zone specialist, Chuck Bergman, would like to say a few words. Chuck is the man behind the curtain. He works his tail off all year long to make MDOT work zones safer and to make this event happen. So let's give a warm welcome to Chuck, cool as ice Bergman. <laughs> I'd like to come up here and say thank you all for coming. We really appreciate your support for our goal of towards zero deaths and work zone safety. I normally Chris comes up here and talks because uh, he's a more eloquent speaker, but I have something to tell you today that he doesn't even know. Um, we started this probably five years ago at the Claire Welcome Center. Uh, we have about 30 people standing out there in a the cold, wet, windy day. And then we moved indoors because we're smart like that. We don't want to stay out in the cold. Um, and it just makes me very proud to see all you guys here today um, at this event. Uh, so, um, one important thing I need to tell you is next year is the 20th anniversary of National Work Zone Awareness Week. And to let you know, tomorrow in Washington, D.C., ATSA is going to announce that they have Michigan to be the National Work Zone Awareness Week host state for 2020. At the It's going to be held the same time of year down at the American Center for Mobility at, in Ypsilanti, where we're making that uh, place happen right now. So, I'm very excited about that. I hope to see all of you there next year, times two. We want this to be the biggest event across the country, because now Michigan is on the national stage, and we want people across the country to know that people in Michigan care about our work zones and work zone safety. Thanks.
Well, that is a nice surprise. All right, we have one more special guest. We have a new sheriff in town for the Michigan Department of Transportation. Our new director is Mr. Paul Adwell. Uh, Paul has been with the department for years and years and has a lot of experience in transportation and work zones. So please welcome our new MDOT director, Paul Adjuba. Thank you, John. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's truly a pleasure to be here today. Uh, first, let me say thank you to Tim Elmers for hosting this. It's really glad to see that we brought this event up north uh, for for a change, and hopefully we'll keep any change in between Southeast and uh, North region. I think it's, it's a great thing. Uh, my, symp my sympathy to Ms. Snell and the family, uh, this, this, this is not an easy event at all. These cones here represent four, 18 people that never made it back home to their families. And that, to me, is 18 too many. Uh, we at MDOT, we've been working very hard with the industry to make sure that we don't put 14 cones in front of, of us anytime we have this kind of presentation. I mean, road construction has come a long way. We've made a lot of changes, a lot of strides, high intensity shading, putting on your vest when you're out there. I can go on and on about the things we've done, paying state police to be out there patrolling, because as she, as she said, even with a very well-designed, perfect construction zone, sometimes distracted drivers, you know, what, what happened to her husband does happen. So my closing thoughts, first let me say, the, the theme, Drive Like You Walk Here, is, is a great one. Because when I saw that, it tells me, treat people the way you would like to be treated, right? When you're driving through that construction zone, think about those people out there walking. It's a tough, tough job. So I leave you with this. For those of you guys who are out there walking every day, please, please, also be conscious about, uh, as she said, regardless of how well the, 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 the construction zone is designed, about uh, you know, drunk drivers, distracted drivers. These things still happen. And we are going to continue to strive to do better. Again, thank you, everybody, for coming to this event. Thank you so much. All right, that's a wrap. Uh, stick around. We've got uh, delicious food, drinks. So uh, stick around. Let's chat. We'll see you all next year for the national event in uh, Ypsilanti. And Chuck is queuing me. What's this? Oh, sign in. Oh, yeah, if you didn't sign in, please sign in. All right, and uh, check out our giveaways if you haven't, and I'll see you in the chow line. Thanks again.